Good evening, folks. It's Diamond with the Oppenheimer Ranch Project and Magnetic Reversal News, bringing you a magnetic excursion update Friday, June 6th, 8.45 p.m. Mountain Time, 2025. Lake Mead is drying up and, well, more Sahara dust is on its way. That might mean we might not have any Atlantic hurricanes forming at all in June. Keep calm. That's well, it's boom time. Multiple tornadoes spotted amid intense storms Friday morning in Oklahoma, and this stormy pattern in the south will last for days, producing possible severe weather, flooding rain, and maybe, well, large hail. Here are the severe storm threats Saturday through Saturday night. The bullseye Atlanta west through Jackson, Mississippi, all the way up through Little Rock, so heed the warnings. The major threat, the extreme threat, Sunday and Sunday night moves further west to North Texas and Oklahoma City. And Tornado HQ showing a line of storms in that region right now. We've got nine severe weather warnings across the U.S., the most recent in Texas, Colorado, and Oklahoma, as well as Kansas. A tornado warning right now in Hansford and Ocotree County in Texas. Severe thunderstorm warnings in Baca and Los Angeles. Anamas, Colorado, another severe thunderstorm warning just popping up in Lee County, New Mexico. Holy macaroni. Come over to Tornado HQ to stay abreast on what's happening in the skies near you. Smoke knows no boundaries. What Canada's fires mean for the U.S. in the future? Well, good news. Most of the Canadian wildfire smoke has pushed away from the lower 48 and, well, that is the current situation. Small stringer of smoke here. You can see the active wildfires in the U.S. number in the dozens as we enter wildfire season. Sahara dust reinforcements are on the way. Early season dust outbreaks reduce chances of rain in the south, especially Florida this weekend, while keeping the tropical Atlantic quiet. And more plumes are headed our way. Here is through June 11th. Yeah, so it's going to be keeping this, this dust is going to be keeping the tropics cool, so to speak, for tropical development. But we could see something emerging here in the Gulf because there the dust does dissipate there. So we'll keep a close eye on the tropics for you as things develop. Now, Lake Mead, the biggest U.S. reservoir, is at its third lowest elevation in decades. And with paltry snowpack, no recovery is really expected unless the monsoon kicks in in a big way. It's not actually the lowest level ever. Check, take a look here at 2022. 2022 at this time was actually more than 10 feet lower than it is today. So we'll keep a close eye on 2022 and the low level of 1,040 and see if the lake level drops 16 more feet this summer. The chances are, I don't think that's what's happening here based on the numbers, so. And even Lake Powell is increasing since early May it's been, and been rising rapidly in just the last week there. So good news on two of the biggest lakes on the Colorado River. And here is the full forecast. Areas of severe thunderstorms and excessive rainfall through the weekend. Several rounds of severe thunderstorms are ongoing and expected from the central and southern high plains to the southeast U.S. through Sunday. We always recommend you go to Tornado HQ for all the latest updates, and you can just click on the audio alerts. So you don't even have to be at your computer. You can just have your computer on, enable audio alerts, and it will alert you to any severe weather uh, or storms that pop up while you're not watching. We've also got large hail, damaging winds, and a few tornadoes possible in these storms. Thunderstorms may also bring areas of excessive rainfall, which could bring flooding to parts of the aforementioned areas through Sunday. We've got flood warnings out for most of Oklahoma, severe thunderstorm warnings and watches. What do we got up here? Excessive heat warnings. Well, it's going to barely get to 90 there, so I wonder what they're whimpering about up in Washington State. But I do digress. Let's take a look at the GFS model here and move it through three, six hours. You can see that severe weather moving east and into Arkansas overnight. And here is Saturday, Sunday, and Monday. 
beginning of the week, we're going to see a big severe weather threat in all these same regions again and again and again. It is spring, dang, dang. So buckle up, buttercup. It's going to be spicy. The planet cooled in May. Spain's climate has been unchanged in 50 years. And June snow dusts the Scottish mountains. Here you can see June snow on the Scottish highlands. The latest UAH satellite temperature-based data has been dropping now for almost a year. We've dropped almost 0.3 degrees C. And the numbers keep getting lower and lower. This is the Hunga Tunga effect. And that seems to be coming to a close. Spain's climate is unchanged for the last 50 years. This is Spain's climate map based on Copian systems, and it hasn't changed in 50 years. How do you like them apples? Seismic update. No real quakes of note. We do have this big boomer, 6.4 in Chile at a depth of 76 kilometers. Hopefully nothing bigger emerges up on the surface. We've got a significant 4.0 in Caliente, Nevada. And Stanley, Idaho continues to rock worldwide overall. Other than those quakes, very low level activity. Bringing us to Worldwide Volcano News, long list today. We've got Popo to 20,000 feet, Raum, 20,000 feet, Swanasima, 4,000 foot blast, Ibu on the list, Sokolajima, puffing and passing the 5,000 feet there. Semadu, who knew? Now you do. Take a look at Fuego. More spicy activity, intense lava flowing pyroclastic flows as the eruption continues there. And a recap on the massive lava fountaining at Kilauea's 24th paroxysm. It is record-breaking. Fuego on the list, Raventalo, 14,000 feet, San Gay on the list, Nevado de Ruiz to 21,000 feet, Suanos Hima to 4,000, Ibu puffing and passing, Semadu, who knew, now you do 15,000 foot blast, Suanos Hima to 6,000 Fuego, possible volcanic ash. Sokolajima, 5,000 foot puff. Whew. Ibu, puffing and passing. Raventador, possible volcanic ash. Ducono to 8,000 feet. This is all just today. And now we've hit the seventh. Uh, Raum to 13,000, wrapping up the list. Space weather, moderate flaring from almost no sunspot activity. These are just plages with some little pinpricks there. No real space weather in our future. We are waiting for a potential coupling with this coronal hole and a small plasma filament headed our way. It looks like the, pla uh, the coronal hole is now coupling with us, so we're just waiting for plasma speed to increase. First, you got an increase in density, and then after, you have an increase in speed. If the plasma filament hits, we would expect to jump in all telemetry simultaneously. Long dark streaks spotted on Mars aren't what scientists thought. A set of dark streaks that regularly wind across the Martian surface are more likely to be formed by dust than by wind and wind than by water, as initially thought. A new artificial intelligence analysis has revealed. The Martian slope streaks previously thought these large discolored features may be signs of running water, but just like NASA usually is, they're wrong. Never a straight answer. And these are ventifacts. Yes, created by the wind. And creepy indeed. Now, when we think of dinosaurs, we typically don't think of polar dinosaurs. We think of dinosaurs living in tropical environments and eating people in one foul swoop. But the reality is much different. In fact, during the epoch of dinosaurs, Dinosaurs actually did live in the polar regions and did quite well. Deposits in southern Australia, millions of years old, well, uncover the surprising ecosystems that sustain these ancient creatures. And many of them flourished in a polar climate. Absolutely mind-boggling. Our atmosphere's growing thirst is a hidden cause for worsening droughts. Apparently, these fear mongers over at Science Alert didn't get the memo. The Hunga Tunga uh, explosion, January 2022, sent billions of tons of water into the stratosphere, and it's still there. So, not that thirsty, in my opinion. Well, and in Hunga Tunga's opinion as well. A great paper coming out from the Comet Research Team 
evidence of a 12,800 year old shallow airburst depression in Louisiana with large deposits of shocked quartz and melted materials. Just add another layer to the Younger Dryas impact hypothesis and Lee and I will be breaking it all down Saturday night on Rumble Magnetic Reversal News in our next episode of Cosmic Catastrophe. So check it out. Tune in for the newest update. And you don't have to wait until Saturday to see a great show on Magnetic Reversal News. In just a few minutes, Lockheed Volcanic Eruption in 1783 changed the world and do Cosmic Rays kickstart evolution. Join us tonight for a one hour plus expose on the topics. I'm sure you'll be interested to hear what we have to say in just a few minutes. And there's just three weeks and a few days left to buy your tickets for the ultimate Petroglyph Panel Tour at the Canyon of the Ancients. And we'll get to see Skull Castle Ruin and go to secret locations that no humans ever get to see. And only Rex Bear and I know about them. Join us for a one-in-a-kind event, life-changing experience at the Canyon of the Ancients in Southwest Colorado. Tickets are just 70 bucks for the day, 100 bucks for VIP. Get them before they all run out. And that's a boom to knowledge. Please share this video. Hit the thumbs up. Do all those YouTube things. Most of you watching are unsubscribed. Please subscribe to the channel. It helps our channel grow. We love each and every one of you. And we'll see you all in a few minutes over at Magnetic Reversal News on YouTube for Lackey Volcanic Eruption in 1783. I, I said rumble. I apologize. No, no, no.